This week I got him a new tool. Well, it's used, but it's a new tool. <laughs> and I'm having a bit of an issue with it. It's a joiner planer. Now, anybody that's into woodworking, they love those things. And I keep calling it a planer joiner or just a planer. And I keep thinking the name of tool sometimes just doesn't work for me. And I don't know if it's just me, but I've always had problems with the technology and the terminology they like to throw into a tool that may not necessarily do what they're talking. Like the joiner planer. Let's face it, first you plane, then you join. That's, that's the opposite. What's that all about? Days. And some of the names don't always seem to work with me. Uh, like, I guess you say, and it gets really strange, was like this one here. Uh, you know, what is that? Well, I've heard everything from a left handed metric wrench, but I always consider it to be a great uh, electrician's hammer. Yeah. And this one here is uh, also uh, probably, I've always called it a, you know, a pry bar, isn't it? Sure it is. And this, this is my, uh, this is this is my hammer. I like this hammer because it's rubber. It's a rubber face, but it has sand in it, so it's a sand head hammer. But it, it's it's like a dead blow hammer, and I use it as a dead blow hammer. I use it for anything I need to hit. Uh, I, of course, I don't drive nails with it, but if I'm bumping something around with a hammer. I really like the rubber face because it doesn't really make any marks, doesn't bang anything up on you, so it's, it's always been a really cool uh, tool. What I wanted to talk about today was, uh, they came out, I guess about 10 years ago, about 10, 12 years ago, and I think the company's name at the time was Teague, and it was as seen on TV, and you know, he said three payments of $90 or something in, and the tool is uh, becomes yours. <laughs> <laughs> but I've got them here today. I've got a couple of them, and I have reluctantly decided not to buy one because I watch the television programming. And when you see as seen on TV, you think, okay, they're selling it because it's not working. So then you start thinking, well, you know, it would be a really cool tool, but I don't think it does what they say it does. So, does it? Well,. Obviously in the industry, when you go to a hardware place like Ace Hardware or Home Depot, uh, Lowe's, any of those places, and you walk in and you now see the other companies are selling that tool, you say, you know what, maybe that thing does what it's supposed to do. So maybe it is a good tool. Uh, I've got one here, it's uh, Bosch, it's battery operated. So I'll probably show it to you there and maybe you can see it. I think you can see it pretty fair. Maybe we need a white background here. I don't know. Or more lighting. More lighting. Uh, this is a metal cutting one. And uh, got this. Same as I keep telling you guys. Clean your darn tools. This one was being used on drywall. And what happened was the drywall powder got up in behind the button here. And it packed up enough that when you push the switch, it wouldn't run. In fact, it wouldn't work at all. So the guy sold this to me for next to nothing, you know, and just said, not only that, he was desperate to try to get some money out of me. He said, I'll even throw in this one, which doesn't work. Same thing. Took both of these units apart, both of them jammed up with drywall dust in the switch so they would no longer work. Now this, of course, is corded. This is a 110 version. And this one I've got what they call bimetal. The bimetal uh, ones aren't that great on the metal, apparently. You know, they, they'll still cut through a nail really think these are a fascinating tool because you know you can sort of like hey I can cut a square hole now so that's pretty neat. The problem I had with these particular two tools 
is first I wasn't sure of application. You know, you just, what am I going to run into that I need this, you know? And I've had continually, over and over again, I've run into jobs where one of these babies is getting me out of the, out of the fix, or the problem. So, I sort of do like them, and they are pretty cool. Now, you're not going to build a house with, uh, you know, one of these. It's just not going to happen. But if you have to get something trimmed off, and you have a, like a problem getting into where it is, or cutting a little piece of wood, uh, such as door trim work, that sort of thing even, I found that these are really awesome. Obviously, drywall, they're fabulous. If you have to cut drywall out for around a window, an outlet, a light switch, something like that, uh, I noticed the guys in the industry are just absolutely using these things like crazy. So they obviously, you know, they quickly found out, hey, you know, this this is going to do it. The only problem was, like I said, was that they don't they don't clean them. Uh, I have used this one, same thing. I've run into a couple places where, like, I had a like a nail or something stuck in an old piece of wood, and I found it was really handy to have this around because you could get up in there and you know cut this out of there with one of these little bimetal type blades. Not the greatest. I mean, if you're in a hurry, now this this is not going, you know, no, nothing's going to happen fast with these tools. But I was surprised how much cutting you can do with one of these. My biggest issue, I guess, with either of these tools is there's a lot of vibration to your hands. So if you're trying to cut like really super, super accurate or something, and nah, not going to happen. But I guess if you could get into like maybe building something where you had a guide or something to hold the tool where the cutting blade had to stay like you know right on track or something you might get some better work out of it. It's a pretty interesting item. Uh, so what do you call this? I started calling them a lot of different names. Well not those, just those names you know I mean you know uh, uh, I was calling I was referring to them as oscillating saw uh, hand oscillating saw, uh, I called it uh, I called it a buzz saw even because it buzzes, makes a lot of buzz noise. Uh, I've seen them uh, with a lot of different names. I'm hoping somehow down the road, not too long from now to make life easier, uh, we'll figure out what these are. They're oscillating saws right now I guess is what we can call them. They vibrate these blades right here, and I'm not sure how bad it would be on the hands to touch it when it's running. Probably pretty bad, but they vibrate back and forth like really, like really fast, and that's what creates the cutting action. So, uh, if you're cutting into something and you have a problem getting in there, something like that, or and you can get different sizes, that sort of thing, different applications. They're really, I was really surprised. They're really, really handy around the shop. So, I'm going to say that you know this is a pretty neat little tool. I wouldn't go out and buy uh, the top of the line brand new one unless I was in the business, a, a contractor or something along that line, or semi-contract work all the time. And I would imagine around the boats and stuff, even they're probably a pretty handy little tool. The uh, the only drawback uh, that I could find was, like I said, was the vibration and trying to control the cut. If you're really trying to get a really nice, accurate, pretty cut. I couldn't get that out of this one. It's sort of a bummer. And the only other problem was when I went online, I was looking to buy some extra blades or something. And I said, okay, well, let's order some blades for the tools. And uh, first thing, of course, the internet needs is the name of the, the name of the tool. You know, jigsaw, circular saw. What is this? What do you got? Um, and I started scratching my head. Uh, it's a, uh, it's a, yeah, it's a, you know, one of those uh, saws. I actually wanted to call it a Teague because I remember Teague was the tool that first came out that brought this type of uh, technology to the uh, well, the tradesman or tool guy like me. So that was what they were called I, originally in my books, but uh, they, they've given them, I've seen some different, uh, mostly oscillating or something around that name. So it's a really strange tool, interesting tool. But for coffee and tools this week, I just wanted to, you know, take a look at those. If you get a chance to get one at a decent price, you might want to add it to your tool collection because I have to admit the darn things are handy and they will cut in places where no other saw will go. And sometimes that's we get ourselves into those fixes all the time where no saw will go. So pretty, pretty cool item. Guys, that was it. Wrap it up this week for Coffee and Tools. Thanks for watching. See you next week.